Okay. <clears throat> I think I think we're live, so you know we're at a, a, a we're at the recording started. But uh, this weekend indoor football is here, ready to go. Uh, we're just gonna keep the Sioux Fall Iowa game, um, you know, kind of on at the side. This one's over. Uh, so I'll update the standings. I've already updated the standings and stuff like that for that. So NAL debut this week. And the week one scores looks kind of surprising to you, don't it? Rakeem Cato and the Fayetteville Mustangs went into Orlando. A, a nice, you know, a nice crowd in Orlando, too. You know, over 7,000 went down to the Amway Center. And unfortunately, Fayetteville basically beat up on Orlando, you know, after a certain point. Um, San Antonio beat Carolina. You know, I came, I did not expect, you know, San Antonio to win. But I mean, with Arvell Nelson at QB, you know, the way, you know, the way San Antonio was playing, I mean, my goodness, let me tell you. Good stuff. And, of course, Jacksonville beat West Texas, and that West Texas broadcast was atrocious. Along with the Nets, you know, you know, being back, the only, again, the weird thing about West Texas' Nets is they wanted to match the aesthetic that they had because, you know, they play, you know, in what they consider a hanger, and it just doesn't, it just, it just looks off. Just put, just paint them. The correct color, which is yellow, just put just paint on the right color. We don't we don't have to match aesthetics and other thing. Just put put some put a dab of paint on there and just get it done. You know, just that that does not look right. I'm sorry. But the big thing, you know, again, aside from Fayetteville and San Antonio impressing me personally was Antonio Brown taking majority ownership of the Albany Empire. Giving Tom Manos the boot, giving uh, somebody else the head coaching job. I forgot who it was off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, a lot of people are upset at this. I personally figured something like this was going to happen. I figured it wouldn't take long for the like, Tom Foolery to come to the Empire, and it has come. Very early on, in fact, it came days before the season even started. I know. I know the Empire hadn't played a game yet, but the NAL season has started. So this will continue to dominate the conversation, I think, for most of the season. You know, Antonio Brown, that's just how it is with the Empire. And this will be this will give the NAL some publicity. Um, I can't really say more on it than I already know. Um, I don't want to project or anything, you know. This could be good. This could be bad. This is what I said. You know, weeks ago, this is what I said weeks ago. This could be good, this could be bad. We'll see. AB could even play, and we'll see if that happens. Um, The IFL, again, the Iowa Sioux Falls game is wrapping up, and it's kind of hilarious that Kevin Guy got ejected last night in the um, game between Arizona and Tucson. You know, uh, really hilarious result. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, the refs were technically wrong. You know, the clock wasn't being wound properly. But it's just hilarious that guy got ejected. And then there's so many injuries to quarterbacks, you know, uh, like like Andrew Powell hurt, you know. uh, I was just kind of decimated, and I think there's just a lot of injuries in general so far. And it was really affecting Iowa, been affecting, you know, some other teams as well. Not just in the IFL, but in other leagues. But, you know, you look at the standings right now, you know, everybody's played at least two games now. So, you know, again, like I said last week, the West will be a dogfight in the East. You know, somebody's going to have to get that fourth spot in the East. Could be Sioux Falls, could be Green Bay, could be Tulsa, could be Iowa. Um, Iowa just needs anything, any sign of life. Along with Tulsa, they need some signs of life, too. Uh, Champions Indoor Football, um, there was, again, the Billings-Salina game. That was that was, that was was a terrible stream. 
Um, they also had a legit gripe with the refs at the end of that game. Um, I'm wondering, will Topeka ever win a game? Because they haven't won a game yet in the CIF, and they kind of need to win one soon. They could not beat Southwest Kansas last night. And there's one undefeated team left in the CIF, and that is the Omaha Beef. They beat up on Gillette in the second half of that game. Um, they kept up with the beef for a good minute, but ultimately Omaha was just too much. And I think Gillette got humbled in that one. But all in all, you know, CIF has been, you know, interesting. The streams are still terrible. And by the way, I had Omaha stream last night. Assault in my ears, but it's all right. You know, it's fine. It's fine. Just get it together. Get it together. At some point, you got to get it together. But yeah, you look at the CIF standings, you know, you kind of, you kind of just see where I think our six playoff teams are going to be. Because again, CIF has six playoff spots for some reason, but it's all right. It's fine. Um, the consequences, there are consequences for West Texas leaving the AIFA. There are going to be some consequences here. And the consequences are as follows right now. Carolina Predators, they played Peach State in a soccer plex last night, got whipped. The AIFA, AWFC crossover games, those are probably not going to happen. You know, and again, I think the Texas Pride are gone. Um, but the way the schedule looks, the way I've been able to compile it, um, I don't know if Mississippi will play a road game, and I'll give you another team who's not playing a road game here in just a second. But you see the Dallas Falcons, the Capital City Cyclones, Las Vegas Kings, uh, South Florida Thunder, Mississippi Raiders, Columbus Lions, you know, Carolina Predators as well. You know, and it looks it looks all right. Uh, we still have some games that are kind of to be determined again. Um, like the South Florida Capital City game didn't line up very well, so that's why I kind of had a question mark. It was a date listed for May 2nd, but it was for a different game, so I kind of moved that to that date. And then that June the 3rd Mississippi raiders Wenatchee Valley game, that is also to be determined because Mississippi doesn't have that game listed on their website, but Wenatchee Valley does. So we'll see. We'll see. And, and again, another consequence is the Columbus Lions. They only have home games for the 2023 season. They only have home games. There was a game against the Southern Renegades. Renegades, I don't think, are playing again this year. They got a game against Peach State in there. They got two games against the Carolina Predators, two games against Tampa, uh, the Capital City Cyclones. And then a game against the Dallas Falcons, along with the game against the South Lord Thunder, which got changed. Like the original date was like May the 12th. Now they changed that to May the 14th. And then some other dates, it seems, have changed as well. This is just absolutely disgusting. I am disgusted at this. This is what Columbus downgraded for a league that has not proven themselves at all, a league with a bunch of teams that have not played. Any games really at all. You know, Carolina may be the only legit one, maybe Capital City as well, Mississippi as well, but South Florida? No. The Dallas Falcons? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, the Vegas Kings, they've been able to play. I even looked at their uniforms. Their uniforms actually look kind of nice. But uh, AIFA is just so unproven, and there's just so much turnover and nonsense going on behind the scenes, and you wonder what in the world's going to happen with that. Is that partnership with the AWSC even going to mean something? Because it looks like it will not. And I think that one, I think that partnership has deteriorated completely. So you look at the AWFC. When on she beat Idaho 38-34 last night in the first actual league game. There was a YouTube live stream that the Skyhawks attempted to do, but it wasn't even full screen, and it cut out at the first quarter. The current schedule is listed right here. You see it. You see the Cali Gold on there twice. You see Capital City on there, but who knows if that game will happen. 
you see the Las Vegas Kings. Las Vegas Kings have played, you know, a couple games. Uh, played one game so far against an AI, uh, AWFC opponent against Boise. They got a game against Wenatchee Valley. They got a game, you know, they got another game against Sida. Oh, and then they got two against Oregon. And I think Las Vegas will have another trip, you know, to Wenatchee Valley instead of the Mississippi Raiders. I think that's the game that might be changing. And I think the Capital City Cyclones, that game's not going to happen either. But all in all, really disappointing, you know, for the AWSC. Really disappointing because I think league wanted this partnership to be a thing and it materialized for a hot second and now it's it's just not it's just not going well because i mean you look at the schedule now it looks terrible and you look at the three teams you know it's not bad it's not bad for the three teams they do have it's just like yeah it is what it is you know and I think the, yeah, the Storm-Iowa game just ended. It's 54-24. That game is now over, so you can officially chalk that up with Iowa being 0-3. And then the National Football Association, the NFA, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a disaster yet again. Website, it was gone. Somebody caught on to that. You know, like three weeks ago, Westchester, Censor, Illinois, Il- Indianapolis, Southland Ridge Bulls, they seem to be the only teams that are playing. Westchester got awarded a forfeit because um, the other Illinois Ridge Bulls seem to have like forfeited or something like that. I don't know. There was a forfeit listed on the website, but, you know, it's kind of weird. I think they're still working on it, but it's been three weeks, you know, so I don't know. And the other Illinois Razor Bulls, the Michigan Hurricanes, they looks like they've been they've been moved back to 2024, it seems, on the NFA website. And then Elite Indoor Football. How about it? They keep on rolling themselves. They got started um last week, actually. And you see the schedule as it stands here. You see the schedule as it stands, you know, mostly Peach State. Southern Steam and the Atlanta Furious, those are the three teams that will primarily be playing games. But you see the Knoxville Nightmare, you see the Space Coast Tar Heels, you know, you see, yeah, that's about it, really. You see all that. That's really the only other teams, I think. And there's a lot of TBA games with the Furious right now, and Peach State and Southern as well. But you know, for the most part, EIF, they, they keep moving along with what they have, you know, teams playing in soccer plexes and whatnot. That's all I got. Um, yeah. So that's this week in no football. Uh, I'll see y'all next Sunday. I think it'll be, I think it'll be like late next Sunday, like six o'clock or something like that. In any case, I'll see you next Sunday.